This is Cristiano Ronaldo. This is LeBron James. And this is Virat Kohli. Three global legends of the games and arguably the greatest athletes to ever exist. And these two are Ali Abdal and Stephen Bartlett, two mega YouTubers turned entrepreneurs. But what do they all have in common? In fact, what do all these people have in common? It's this tiny little band that they're all wearing. This is Whoop Fitness Tracker that allows them to understand their bodies better than ever before. And it does not have a screen. In the last decade, wearable tech has exploded. 21% of the Americans wear a smartwatch and the global wellness market is valued at $1.5 trillion, which is growing annually by 5 to 10%. But how did we get here? This all started back in World War II when the first infamous lie detector was invented. That was the first piece of tech that used sensors to monitor heart rate, pulse, blood pressure to sniff out the lies. In 1960s, we got the access to pedometers. These simple little devices were designed to count steps and encourage a bit more of an active lifestyle. In the 1980s, we saw the introduction of heart rate monitors by companies like Polar. These devices were game changers for athletes because these were offering real-time data on their heart performances. And they used to look pretty simple. A simple band with a basic EKG and chest monitor, like that's all. The 2000s brought a significant leap forward with the rise of smartwatches. But it was Fitbit actually that came in 2007 and revolutionized the entire ecosystem of the industry. And the reason for doing that is because health monitor has been evolved from just measuring your, you know, pulse rate and blood pressure to providing you real-time data and providing a lot more insight than just measuring your daily steps. Apple and Android companies also joined the competition in a few years time, but Apple Watch kind of become the go-to fitness watch for everyone. It was as Apple as it could get. Whoop was actually founded a few years prior to Apple Watch back in 2012. Let's look at the key events here. In 2021, Whoop released Whoop 4.0, which is arguably their smartest tech strap or watch or whatever that thing is. And Fitbit was acquired by Google. At the same time, Apple was dominating the entire market, keeping more than 60% of the smart tech share. In order to understand a new entrant in a market or a potential disruptor, you would want to understand four parts of how that company will be a success. And in this case, Whoop was entering a market that was dominated by Apple and so many other players. But how is that one company is now worth $3.6 billion? So I want to look at like a four core objects. For me, those are why this particular problem, why this particular solution, why this particular team, and why now? So if you look at these four different layers of why, you really kind of understand why that one company has been able to not only just enter into the market, but try to just grow as quickly as they can. So let's look at a few numbers here. In the US, the number of gyms, health and fitness club increased almost 29% from 2013 to 2023, with more than one in five Americans attending a health club or a studio in 2021. The definition of wellness was changed from measuring your calories and pulse rate to six key areas. It's not just about the caloric intake and step counts anymore. And Whoop was actually created to address all of these problems. But how does that actually work? So Whoop sensors take seven different data points on human body about a hundred times in a second to help you get more insights on sleep, strain, recovery, and stress levels. Whoop is actively measuring your heart rate, heart rate variability, skin temperature, skin conductance, respiratory rates, pulse oximetry, and movement. That's like a lot of data. And some of the things that I don't even know, like what do they stand for? It's always easier, or at least somewhat easier when you're entering in a market with a bit of an unfair advantage. In fact, most of the investors look out for these unfair advantage before they can back any company. But Whoop was not entering a legacy market. They're not entering in a market that has never heard of technology before. In fact, wearable tech market was already digitized by huge, gigantic tech competitors. They were already spending millions in research and developments. The tech was widely accepted and globally used. So it's really hard to figure out like where does Whoop kind of fit in. So here's the thing. The global wellness market is estimated to touch $8 trillion. That means there's a huge potential for a new entrant in the market if things are done right. But what do I mean by if done right? Well, that means execution. This is the code of Will Ahmed, the founder of Whoop. I don't care if you're a 30 years old girl or an 85 years old man. If you put on Whoop, it's going to tell you something valuable about how you can improve your health or improve your performance. The next one is, is the team. All great companies have one thing in common. If you look at all of them, they have a great founding team. They already know the problem. They know the market. They understand how to get into that market. So it's the team that actually makes or breaks a great company. So he founded Whoop in 2012 with John and Orlean, and they were incubated in Harvard Innovation Lab. But if you look at Whoop as a disruptor in a way, one of the things that they really have to tap into is their ability to figure out the distribution even before they have a huge audience, even before they have a huge market. One of the first 
first 100 or 200 people who were wearing their Whoop watch was Michael Phelps and LeBron James. So if you put their names and logos out there, that means a lot of eyeballs. That means a lot of distribution advantages. That means a lot of authenticity. So for me, they actually checked all the four boxes. Like why now you can actually look at how big the market is. And if you look really, really closely, you can figure out that Whoop is not comparing with the smartwatches. In fact, Bill Hamill said once, they don't find Apple to be their competitors. Both of these things can coexist. So one is a smartwatch and the other is a totally different beast that only helps you with learning more about your body, which smartwatches are not able to, or at least that's not what their focus is. So you can see the boom, and you, so you can see the growth in the market, and you can also see people are becoming more and more available, and people want to know more about their bodies, and people would want to track what they're eating, how they're sleeping, how they're recovering, and they want to know a little bit more, a lot more, than just like counting steps and, you know, measuring their caloric intake. Any consumer product in the market becomes a huge success once you kind of crack the distribution hack. Like we have seen with Notion, they hacked the distribution by giving away freebies and working with so many influencers and created a whole new niche of productivity influencers on YouTube. Similar to that, Whoop actually tapped into two different audiences, but overlaying is the same influencer marketing strategy. So part one is where they're working with global superstars like LeBron James and Cristiano Ronaldo and Virat Kohli and Michael Phelps and like you name the people. Like everybody knows them. But on the other side of the thing, they're working with micro influencers or influencers who are primarily YouTubers or primarily early bloggers so they're working with them and the underlying message is they're spreading the message so quickly and so efficiently even if you're not somebody like me who's like not wearing any of these things even if you don't wear any of these things you still want to learn like what exactly is that one tiny little band that everybody's wearing on their hands but here's the best part that i found out when i was learning about this company traditionally speaking so you look at like all the smart watches because they're a consumer product, so they're all like one-time purchases. You look at Apple Watch, right? So it's just like a one-time payment. You get the watch and you can just use it. Albeit, Apple has done a great job of releasing a new version every year and then kind of convincing you that you need a new one without actually needing a new one. And even though they're releasing a product every year, they're also kind of making that you need these products and you need to use these products as like a subscription. But anyway, so the thing that I really loved about Whoop's business model is the subscription thing, actually. So like... Like we all know they give the band away for free and then it's just like 30 bucks a month sort of a subscription model that you can just use it and they have a loyalty program and they award the regular users to put on the new band and stuff like that but here's the funny part before actually starting with a subscription model they had exactly the same kind of a model that you know all these other smartwatches have but the problem was because they were pretty small so one stab would cost them around 250 to 300 dollars to just manufacture and produce and this is the thing with i think all the hard tech companies this is like you know if you produce a really small quantity it's going to cost you a lot more and then as you scale up the prices come down so each one of these little bands cost them around 250 to 300 dollars and they were trying to sell that 500 dollars and it was a hard hard sell to convince anybody that hey you just need to pay 500 dollars for this little band that does not even tell you a time or something like that right and that's when you know as in a way as they are already they introduced the subscription model the best part is that like the model was such a success actually that competitors like fitbit and aura ring and amazon halo all of them actually came up with their subscription plans immediately after that now the thing about subscription plans is it kind of becomes like a SaaS business and that's why you know all your vcs actually love the SaaS business is just because the top line revenue and the cogs all these things become very much predictable you can measure the cac you can measure the ltv and you can just see okay how big the company can go and that will obviously help them in getting ways and in growing with whatever the speed they're already growing and the last thing that i think on the list of the disruption that they are causing nobody i think is trying to do these things today is trying to make these fitness trackers invisible what do i mean by that so most people love wearing apple watch but some people actually do prefer to just not put this thing on their hand and that's when whoop actually not even realized that but also take a step further immediately launching a smart wearable tech so all of a sudden now they're like not only just producing that band and you know and competing into that wearable tech industry without saying that they're you know a wearable tech competitor they're also not competing with smart clothing lines so all you can do is you can just put your tracker into those clothes and nobody will know like literally nobody will know that you're you're wearing that although a lot of people would want you to know that they're wearing that but anyway but if you look at any of the companies that have this sort of a like a meteoric rise, they also have some sort of a criticism or a fallback or a negativity. So if you just go to the YouTube and you just search for Whoop, there's a lot of people, like really a lot of people are 
thinking that this thing is fake, the numbers are really arbitrary, the data is not as accurate. But even if the data is accurate, people are making a claim that what if I'm not 100% recovered? I still feel great. And the day that I'm 100% recovered, I feel like shit. So there's this sort of a nuance that this product could be good, but it's not as good as they're portraying it all because of the marketing gimmicks and all because of hype. And, and and the deeper I look and just try to figure out like what's there for Whoop beyond just the hype, like what exactly is there? Why people are just hating a product that everybody seems to love out there, right? So I kind of jot them down into three main areas. So the area one is subscription model, area two is functionality, and the area three is data accuracy. So subscription model is funny is because not a lot of people are a fan of subscription models, right? Like you can see the outage against Netflix and all the streaming services. People just don't like paying for a thing, you know, month in and month out. Some people actually do want to have that one-time purchase and then they can just forget about that and they can just use the product without having been reminded that they have to pay for a service every month. The second one is, is a functionality. So wearing a Whoop actually means that you still need to wear a watch because you just can't see a time because there's like there's literally no screen on that thing and as we're becoming more and more tech friendly people are becoming more used to of the wearable screens like everybody use the apple watch as just like watch like you barely see people wearing an expensive watch and also wearing a whoop but you can see all the time that people are wearing their smart watches and wearing a whoop so to many people it's just like there's usability wise it does not offer them as much of a flexibility as any other smartwatch does and the last one is data accuracy i mean that one has to be a concern like a real real big concern the data is all that you're selling and the data is not accurate right like that's a huge problem but looking ahead the future of wearable tech is bright with advancements in AI, data analytics, variables will become more and more integrated into our lives, enhancing our understanding of our health and wellness. So Whoop won't be beating Apple anytime soon. But the good thing is they don't have to beat Apple or any other smartwatch competitor. They're different products. They can coexist and provide value to the customers. I hope you like it. Thanks so much for watching and I'll talk to you soon in the next one. Peace.